I've not seen death without your eyes. Come that time, when things had gone haywire, a neighbor whom I didn't expect to rise against me, rose against me, and I saw him carry bow and arrow to ambush us with a big outcry. I may tell you that I personally had not known of the some outcries of war. And to us, that was a big shock. After the election, when, when Kibaki merged the winner and this other one failed, that's when things worsened. There was never peace anymore. In Kenya, ethnic competition is life. The way it comes to markets and all this, the Kikuis are bested. They are better business people. The Luos are, the, 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 we can say, they are intellectual. The Luos will spend quality time talking about politics. The problem with the Kikuyu is they like money too much. Kikuyu are very good in grabbing land. They are thieves. The Kikuyu are a bit aggressive. Luos are brackets. The Luos are flamboyant. Likes power. Very smart and own nothing. Now, there, there is a complication here. The Kalenjin, they are kind of quiet people. They will fight to the hilt to protect their land. Beggars. Uh, warlike. A uh, Kalenjin would be told, but you, you don't need to study. You go, go home and run. <laughs> Luo men are romantic. These Luos don't need land. They are lazy. Kikuyu ladies are believed to be beautiful. You go to Amasa, you ask him about Obama, he says, Jalu and Jalu, he's still a Luo. If you, if you want to test the, whether Kikuyu is dead, just drop a coin. The pattern now changed. The youth now design a system of earning money. As people are driving towards Nairobi, even the Kikuyus, they would be stopped. The young boys would demand that they pay them tax. Okay, they are idle, they don't have job, they, they are poor. The boys have been used to stealing, they have been used to looting, they lacked what to loot. They come now to their own people. They had been mobilized and they have the energy to fight. And now they have fought the enemy. And they have chased the enemy away. Who is the next enemy? And the next enemy now is not another youth, because they are all now from the same tribe. The next enemy they can see is a rich guy. He's living comfortably and driving while I'm walking and, and perhaps staffing. So since I have already cleared the enemy for them, for the entire tribe. They also owe me something. And the rich people start leaving the village. They become the next target. And if you don't give them willingly, during the day, they'll come at night. People started realizing that you are in deeper trouble than they had thought. In your own village, you also did not feel safe because you are surrounded by people who are poorer and they would come for what you own. Campaigns around the country, teaching people the importance of voting wisely. You see, shunning tribal politics, they have high expectations in your understanding. Question like, which direction do we vote? Basically, we felt like we need to teach our people so that when they go voting, they vote based on issues. When, when they go out in the villages and they talk, people listen to them because they are perceived as, as educated, highly educated people. Sociologically, they become agents of change. Nobody will come from outside to make this country a peaceful country. It is us. And we need to realize that we need each other. We are Kenyans.